Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new flight controller and this is called the HJLRC FD445 stack. Now this is an F4 flight controller with a 4-in-1 ESC. It comes as a combo as a stack as you can tell right here. And what they're aiming for out of the box is that you use it on large builds. And the reason for that is if you take a look at the components they provide, they give you a full-blown XT60 with the little cover for it and some pretty thick gauge, as well as a small low ESR capacitor. Now this combo is theoretically rated up to a 6S, however, I might test this out on a 6S, but more likely probably sticking it on this little 3 inch. Now if you missed this video, this is like a, a remix of a remix of the floss, which I cut the other day on the channel, so if you want to go ahead and check it out, it's the video before this. Now this is a pretty interesting little stack, because what they're trying to do here, I think, is they're trying to copy the AirBot Ori. Now even though the AirBot Ori was not rated for success a lot of people have been using this on a success and it's been going great and these are both 20 by 20 stacks which is quite remarkable so some of the things it comes with we have xt60 connector silicone wires jsd connector to connect the esc to the flight controller and low esr capacitor however that is not everything what they also provide you with is a really long 25 millimeter screw which is that one right there and they give you four nylon standoffs and they give you a bunch of rubber gaskets. That's three here, three here. So it, it's quite a lot. And then two, 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 and you're still left with one here. And they also give you the locking nut here. It's the self-locking nut. All right, so I'm about to take this thing off and we're gonna take a closer look at it. All right, so now we have the F4 flight controller as well as the 4-in-1 ESC. Now the 4-in-1 ESC looks really nice. Um, I do like the amazing amount of filtration for a 20 by 20 stack. That is just gorgeous. And again, the reason they're able to fit all this is they've made it a bit wider. So here's like a normal 20 by 20 stack. As you can tell, it is quite larger here, around 25 millimeters, I think, or no, the, this is 25 millimeter in width. This is about 31 millimeters in width here. Now you can tell really nice filtration. They're still using really small fits. They're using three by three bets. So, you know, it's not really recommended to run on success, but I guess you can. I don't know this, the data sheet on these they're really difficult to read what brand uh, if i'm able to find that i'll have a link here and give you the theoretical ratings they have so what they've done here is it does have the airbot design if you take a closer look as well uh you can see those little square well, you can't see them anymore but they, they like these little square pads i mean that is just airbot signature usually this is an airbot design here so they probably went to airbot to create it because these also look way better than their previous HDLRC F428 stacks. Those are really flimsy, especially with the pads ripping. I've had that happen to me quite often. These look like they're going to be a lot sturdier and a lot more durable in case of some sort of a, a, a crash where something got ripped off. Now, they really thought this ESC through. As you can tell, there's a copper rod here. And right there, instead of the connector, if you didn't want to use a connector, you can also grab everything you needed through solder points on the bottom here. Now it's kind of a weird layout here because they're using two boards. So you have the ESC board and if you take a look at the other side, you have the board that has the microcontroller units and the FET driver and that solders on to the main ESC board here. So, um, you know, a lot of companies doing this. I don't know how good this would be or it will be, but what, what happens here is that the microcontroller units are elevated from the massive current flow that's going inside through the FETs here to the ESC and everything. So it's just getting a bit of voltage because that's all that's all they need here. All they need is like 3.3 volts in here and um, they don't need a lot of current to go through because they're just switching these guys down here. However, the thing that I find to be scary is running something like this on a 6S, the amount of heat generated just here is, is quite remarkable. We can reach temperatures of above 150 degrees Celsius, which I've recorded before. And knowing this, you know, just stuck with a couple solder joints, that can come loose maybe at times, but this is just all theoretical. Um, you know, especially if, I mean, if you're running this hardcore on 6S, then you can expect something of that nature because you do have a lot of heat going on this board and it doesn't have a heat sink as well. So using this as a 6S, just be careful. You can, theoretically, but uh, personally, I wouldn't. Now, we also have the flight controller here. It's just an F4 flight controller. Nothing really special about it. It's really tiny, but I do like the size of the pads here. They have quite a lot of pads. So yeah, just for the people that don't know how to connect this, what you want to do with this one is you want the batteries to be in the back like this. That would be motor one, that would be motor two, that would be motor three, and that would be motor four. So you would put the your first motor here, second motor here, and this orientation so you don't screw anything up. 
battery goes to the back. And if you ever get lost, if you flip it over, you can see the numbers. You have room number one, number two, number should be three, three somewhere, yeah, and four. So when you flip this over, then that's correct. You have one, two, three, four. So this is how you'd wanna install this guy. Now the flight controller, it's a little bit tricky, but usually nowadays they want you to always have the USB stuck to one of the sides. So theoretically, if I had this here, is this the correct way? Actually it is, and how do I know this? Hopefully the camera will be able to show you that. Um, you can see the arrow right there, it's in the corner. It's just a little tiny, tiny arrow. I could be wrong also, it couldn't be an arrow, but it really does look like an arrow. So hopefully it's just like this. This is how you'd stick it in. You have your USB to the left, the boot button to the left. Now believe it or not, this thing even has a barometer on board, so that's pretty crazy. Hopefully INAV is supported on this because this would be really nice to chuck into an airplane. Look how tiny it is, it's pretty amazing here. You have your OSD and it does take GPS input, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and go over some of the pads here. All right guys, so let's go ahead and go over the layout here. So we have the USB up on the left, and here we have the front of the board. So here we see battery voltage. So if you wanted to power your camera through the battery's voltage, so if you're using a 3S LiPo, 4S LiPo, you can go ahead and power up the positive from here, which is the red wire. Next one over is actually called Cam C. Now Cam C could probably mean camera control. I'm not sure, they're not really stating much on their documentation or anything, but I, I mean, that, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Next thing over is the camera. So this is the yellow wire from your camera. Here's the ground. So, if, you know, if you powered it from battery, you'd, you'd give it the red wire here and the black wire here. Now, if you wanted to give the camera five volts, then you would put the red wire here and the black wire here and the yellow wire here, and you're good to go. And here's motor six. So if you're new, just ignore that. If you're not new, then you know what the hell that's for. All right, now moving down to the bottom of the board here, we have RSSI. So if you have a, you know, a dedicated port from your receiver that gives RSSI, that's where you want to connect it. Here we have TX6. And then on top here, so if you're running SBUS, this is where you'd want to connect your SBUS right there. Uh, because this is an F4, so it must go here or your SBUS connection will not work. So keep that in mind. If you're running iBus, you're going to have to put it somewhere else, and I'll show you that in a bit. Next thing over is the buzzer ground. So this is the ground side of the buzzer. If you had a buzzer, this is where you want to connect it. The 5 volt here and the buzzer here. Also, your receiver. Again, if you're SBUS, then you want to put 5 volt ground and then put the signal SBUS right there. Now, if you're running iBus or something else, then you want to do ground 5 volt as well, and your signal would go here. So your iBus signal, for example, would go here if you're using something other than SBus. And that's RX1. And then your ports tab in Betaflight, you would set your serial RX to on, on port 1, UART1, basically, because that's R1 right there. And then here we have 5 volt V2, 5 volt V2. Maybe this means that this 5 volt will work through the USB because maybe the bottom one here is only when the battery is connected, so it can make your life a lot easier. I think that's what's really going on here. So I think this 5 volt will work when the USB is powered. This will make it a lot easier for you to uh, make sure you're bound instead of having to plug the battery in. And here we have 3.3 volt, so if you're running Spectrum or you needed some sort of a 3.3 volt, that's the pad for you. And here's LED, so if you had you know RGB LEDs, this is where your signal would go. And you can power it from here, 5 volt and ground. And it's okay if you have a buzzer and an LED, you can power them up from the same 5 volt. So you can put those wires together, stick them here, stick the ground of the buzzer here, and you can stick the ground of the LED here, which is really important. The, the ground of the LED goes here, and the signal here, because the BZ minus, this is for the buzzer. This is a special ground for the buzzer because that's what enables the buzzer. Let's go ahead and take a look at this side now. So this is the opposite of the USB. Now, it's a bit difficult to see, but we'll start with the bottom, what I can see from back here. So on the bottom, most bottom here is battery voltage, ground, VTX. So if your VTX takes above 5 volts, then you would want to give it power from here. Now, if your VTX takes 5 volts, then you want to give 5 volts here. You want to put the ground here and the yellow wire to your VTX here. And the reason you do that is because the camera signal goes in here, goes through the OSD, and it comes out through the VTX here. So that's what you see the overlay or the on-screen display in your goggles. We also have a TX2 right next to the VTX, which is really nice. Uh, this will allow you to change channels through your VTX if it is smart audio capable. Next thing over is motor 5 output. So if you ever needed five motor outputs, you can do that or remap this to something else. And here we have UART3. Uh, yeah, here we have TX3 and RX3. So this is UART3 if you ever needed them for something. And then these are a little bit difficult to make out. But what I can see is this one is 5 volt. This one is ground. 
and these are SCL and SDA. Uh, these are going to be for like a GPS or some sort of a, a sensor of some sort. Now, if you take a look at the back here, you also have a barometer right there. That's pretty cool. That's really nice, actually. All right, guys, and that's currently it. It is a bit pricey, but the ESC looks really nice, so I might stick it on my testing bench, but I'm still, I still haven't set up the new testing area. I'm um, still in the process of the move and doing some other things as well, but do expect ESC stress testing now as well as uh, obviously the normal ESC testing and some other cool things also that I'm working on. So I'll be doing a lot more testing as well on this channel. And well, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. It looks like a nice ESC more than anything. It uh, looks like a pretty cool stack. I might go ahead and test it out on the new frame that we cut yesterday. So we'll see how well that plays out. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have a link to everything down below. If you can check those out, those greatly support the channel. And also do have a Patreon if you want to support me there. Enable me to make more projects and more testing. That'd be super great. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.